what is the cheapest MacBook that you could actually use? It's a question that a couple of years ago would have been a lot harder to answer, but since 2020, each new generation of Apple Silicon chip has driven prices down on older models, and that means that you can now get away with spending a tiny fraction of the price of a new MacBook and still get a pretty decent experience. But just how low can we go to get a usable MacBook experience? Well, let's start at the bottom of the totem pole for Apple Silicon, the M1 MacBook Air. This, in my opinion, is the number one benchmark for any laptop on the market. It is just a fantastic package, and it can be had now for less than $500. And for the money, it's hard to think of any laptop that could do better. So if you have four or $500 to spend on a MacBook, you can stop watching this video right now because this is the one you should buy, hands down, full stop. But if all you want is a usable MacBook, you can get away with spending a whole lot less. So let's find out just how much less right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Anker's 563 USB-C docking station 10 in 1. This powerful all-in-one hub brings triple display support, 100 watt high speed charging, and 10 versatile ports to your MacBook. Featuring USB-C 3.1 Gen 1, USB-A 3.1 Gen 1, two USB-A 2.0 ports, a headphone jack, and around the back, Ethernet, display port, HDMI, and 4K HDMI, you can massively expand the built-in ports on your Mac, unlocking desk setups that would never have been possible otherwise, and all over a single USB-C connection. Plus, the front USB-C port supports 30 watt charging to keep your phone juiced while allowing ultra fast file transfer. It's the one-stop shop to keep your desk clean and powerful. And with all that functionality packed into a tiny package, it is perfect for your desk setup. So to learn more about Anchor 563 USB-C docking station 10 and one, check out the link in the description down below. A big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. So let's say you don't have four or $500, but you wanna spend half that much. What should you buy? Well, my money would be on this guy, the GOAT, the mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. This thing was absolutely legendary, the last of the traditional Retina MacBook Pros, and a lot of people continue to use these, completely skipping over the butterfly keyboard generation. And to be honest, I can't blame them. I personally would not recommend buying a butterfly keyboard MacBook in 2025. But if you have 200 bucks to spend, this is probably your best bet. These things are now getting to be 10 years old. It's not really the powerhouse that it once was, but it's still plenty usable. Now, when you compare it to the M1 MacBook Air, you can absolutely see the difference in the snappiness of the operating system. But given the $200 price point of this machine, I can forgive that extra second or two of delay in opening applications. For basic tasks, which is really all you can expect from a $200 machine, it gets the job done. And I have to say that this generation of MacBook Pro has held up incredibly well. The design has aged beautifully. It came out almost 13 years ago and it still looks like a modern machine. We have a crisp, bright, 15 inch retina display, which makes viewing your content fantastic. And we've got Apple's iconic chiclet keyboard. No need to mess with success, it works great. The only thing that is starting to become a bit of a limitation is the complete lack of USB-C. This thing only has Thunderbolt 2 ports, which quite frankly aren't very useful anymore. So that's definitely a limitation. But I'll tell you what, for 200 bucks, this MacBook is so usable that I think we can go a little cheaper. Say for example, the 13 inch version of the 2015 MacBook Pro. This is really the dynamic duo of cheap MacBooks. These are without a doubt, the best that you can buy. Sure, you can save a couple bucks and go for a 2013 or 2014 version of this MacBook Pro, but the 2015 adds a force touch trackpad, which is a really great modern feature. And it also has newer generation processors, which run a little smoother. Now, they are all going to be dual core. This particular configuration is the 2.7 gigahertz i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage, which was the base model for this year. But 
it still gets the job done. When comparing it to the M1 MacBook Air, you can really highlight those differences in the time that it takes to launch applications, right? We experienced that on the 15, obviously it's not gonna be any better on the 13. But when we look at the 13 and the 15 side by side, you'll notice that the 13 inch is just a tiny bit slower. It's really not super significant when you're talking about basic types of tasks. Now to get the most out of these machines, one upgrade I would definitely recommend doing is patching them over to macOS Sequoia. By default, 2015 MacBooks will run macOS Big Sur, but if you wanna be on the latest option, it's super easy to do. Just download the Open Core Legacy Boot Patcher, which I'll have linked in the description below, and follow the steps to download macOS, create an installer with a flash drive of your choosing, then you just click a button to patch the EFI partition on your MacBook, boot from it, install macOS completely like normal, and you're up and running. For the realistic scenario that both of these computers are gonna be for, which is basic web browsing, I would mainly look at the difference between these as a difference in screen size. For example, I just got my grandmother her second 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro. I bought her one a couple of years ago and because she keeps it at her desk plugged in all the time, the battery swelled up. She was very intent on examining that over Christmas dinner. So when her battery went out on that machine, I just went ahead and got her a new one. I'll use the old one for parts and there's really nothing more that she's looking for from a computer. It has a big bright retina display, an easy to use keyboard, and it is perfectly sufficient for Googling facts about William Shakespeare, which is basically all she needs to do with it. And the same is true of the 13 as well. I have multiple friends with this exact computer and this exact spec that bought it new 10 years ago and are still using it. But I'll tell you what, I think we can go cheaper. $120 seems like the bare minimum, but we can do better. So what I got is this. This is a 2015 13-inch MacBook Air. Yeah, you'll notice a trend here. 2015 was basically the golden year. I think if you're looking for a used MacBook, look for anything from 2015. And I paid $90 for this fully working MacBook Air. This wasn't a for parts listing. This wasn't one of those things that ships without an SSD and you have to add one. This was just, here's a MacBook Air, 90 bucks. It showed up, I turned it on, that's it. Now look, this MacBook is not fast. That was already the case of our 13 inch MacBook Pro and this is now using an even slower dual core i5. But crucially, we still have eight gigabytes of RAM and this MacBook actually has twice the storage. It has 256 gigabytes. So you're really not in a bad position at all. And to be honest, I thought this was going to be quite a bit slower than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So when I ran Cinebench 2024, I was surprised to find that with a score of 105, it was only about 20 points off from the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now granted, when we bring the 15 inch with a quad core and then we bring in the M1 chip, well, yeah, it really highlights how slow these things are by modern standards. But just because it's slow doesn't mean it's not usable. In fact, putting the 13 inch MacBook Pro and this MacBook Air side by side, you'll notice that there's barely any difference between them. In terms of navigating the operating system on macOS Sequoia 15.2, they're both perfectly acceptable. Where the MacBook Air starts to show its age a lot more than the MacBook Pro, however, is the display. This thing is only a 1440 by 900 IPS panel, and it does not have very good color accuracy, sharpness, or contrast. The blacks are not very black, and honestly, this display looks a little bit terrible. So for my money, I think it would probably be worth the extra 35 or $40 to get a Retina MacBook Pro. But if you wanna buy the absolute cheapest MacBook that you could actually use every day, this is it. 90 bucks, you're getting yourself a 10 year old MacBook Air with a perfectly good battery. This one only has like 300 cycles. And honestly, back before Apple Silicon came out, a deal like this would have been pretty much impossible. I don't think you would have been finding functional, usable MacBooks for less than $100. So this is really a result of two key developments. 
Number one is these new Apple Silicon machines are getting faster and faster and faster, which drives the prices of older but still usable machines downwards. And the other thing is that computers just last longer now. Most basic tasks haven't become more arduous for a computer to run in the last 10 years. So the result of that shift is that computers just last a lot longer than they used to. And a 10 year old MacBook Air can still do most of the same things that this thing was for when it was brand new. However, this shift in how long technology is lasting these days also means that we need to shift our definition of usability. More often than not, nowadays, whether a computer is usable is not a measure of how fast it is, but of how good the overall package is. We're entering a time where the computer will physically wear out before it will become too slow to operate. Put more simply, batteries and displays have a shorter shelf life than the actual computer components themselves. So when you look at the comparison between the 13 inch MacBook Air and the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I think given the $30 price difference between them, you should absolutely spend the money on a MacBook Pro with a Retina display because man, that MacBook Air display is showing its age. Granted, this is a 2015 MacBook Air, but the actual display panel that Apple used was in use since like 2012. So it is not a modern looking thing anymore. But whether your $100 is going to a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, the number one consideration is the battery. Make sure that the condition of the battery on the machine that you're buying is good because that will absolutely wear out before anything else. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Would you buy a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro? Or would you have a secret third option, something that's even older and even cheaper than any of the ones that I listed today? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.